Hello, welcome back. I hope you enjoy the neonatal MCQ series. So continuing with the next one, uh, I hope you are subscribing and also please share and like the videos. As I've explained, the YouTube algorithm recommends it more if there are more likes and engagement. So the question now, which components of the golden hour management have an impact on respiratory adaptation and management? So uh, the choices, delayed cord clamping, thermoregulation, asepsis, appropriate and timely communication, and all of the above. So as I have explained before, please uh, pause for a second. You can uh, pause the screen as well if you need more time to think about it. Now I'll discuss the answer. Obviously the answer is all of the above. So golden hour management is nothing but a standardized approach a protocolized or standardized approach to the management of the very premature babies. So it can apply to the management of any baby who is uh, unwell at delivery. And in the extreme premature babies, there are so many components that need to be covered. Uh, the whole team has to be in sync. We need to remember what should not be missed and do it in a systematic way so that we get it right. So that is the idea of golden hour management. All of you may be familiar with the standardized feeding approach for the premature babies giving benefits in terms of reduced NEC, uh, better uh, time, I mean quicker time to full feeds and discharge as well. So similarly a standardized approach to the golden hour management makes the baby's outcome much better. We have discussed IVH prevention earlier and uh, that is also a systematic approach, a standardized way to reduce or improve the morbidity in a premature baby. So in case of delayed cot clamping, obviously uh, delayed cot clamping is crucial in a premature baby who is already uh, sick and hemodynamically unstable. So this extra blood that comes across from the placenta to the baby uh, is actually the baby's own blood which was filling the lungs before delivery, uh, which is meant to fill the lungs after delivery, sorry. So in this case, uh, the delayed cot clamping reduces the risk of hypotension, it reduces the risk of needing transfusions, and it also reduces the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage as the baby is more stable hemodynamically. Thermoregulation is the most important aspect of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the golden hour management, especially when it comes to the respiratory adaptation and management. So a hypothermic baby has a very high risk of secondary surfactant deficiency as a cold baby doesn't uh, uh, manage the secondary uptake of surfactant efficiently and there is more surfactant de denaturation. Uh, similarly, a cold baby is also prone to a persistent uh, fetal uh, circulation or PPHN-like scenario. So maintaining the temperature is very important and hemodynamic changes, the risk of IVH, everything increases. Immunity of the baby is less when there is hypothermia. So preventing hypothermia is critical and you need to have uh, specific measures to reduce the risk of hypothermia in the small babies. Uh, asepsis goes without saying that uh, these babies are very fragile, they are sticky, they are wet when they are born and obviously there are so many things happening. You are uh, taking things from the resuscitator, you are taking things from the transport incubator, uh, you have to clamp the cord, you have to uh, arrange the pulse oximeter to be tied, the baby needs procedures to be done, maybe surfactant to be given. So there is a very high chance of asepsis being broken in this situation. So please maintain asepsis, make sure the team is fully aware of the significance. One important uh, factor to remember is that when you are touching fomites, even if you are wearing gloves, you can use alcohol gel on top of it. And the other important factor is uh, when you transfer the baby to the NICU, for example, and before you take the baby out of the incubator, change your gloves to a fresh pair of gloves because you have touched the uh, incubator or the trolley to carry the move the baby and uh, better to change it quickly, uh, encourage the team to get this practice as well. And of course, any procedure that is done subsequently should be done with full aseptic precautions. Uh, you do have uh, care bundles for each of these procedures, which will remind you to do all the steps necessary. The uh, last point here is appropriate and timely communication. So the communication can be from the uh, physician to the parents before the delivery and also to brief them uh, at the time of resuscitation and when you transfer the baby. A proper communication builds trust and this is a premature baby who is going to stay longer in the NICU and this initial trust and confidence in the team helps you in further discussions and decision making when it comes to uh, managing the baby. 
the communication within the team for example the labor room team being asked to increase the uh, temperature of the labor room or the ot because it's a premature baby and within the team to make sure the plastic bag is available the appropriate sized equipment for resuscitation is available and you have someone ready to bring the surfactant to the labor room if at all you decide to give it most of the units now decide to give the surfactant in the nicu unless it's a very difficult resuscitation when you call for the surfactant and give it in the labor room so uh, having this discussed and arranged is very important as well so these are very important points and the idea of this mcq is just to sensitize you to what we mean by golden hour approach and why a standardized approach to most of these aspects of neonatal intensive care gives a better outcome i hope this helps and please again do like and share thank you